Well, it's fair to say the speculation didn't last long, as 100 Thieves have officially returned back to the Call of Duty esports scene yesterday, announcing half of their lineup, leaving the rest for us all to attempt and debunk it. And to talk on these changes and more, I've got Call of Duty World League commentator and analyst Chance, a.k.a. Chance the Caster. What's going on today, buddy? Uh, not much. I'm just uh, excited about the news, excited about the changes, and ready for, honestly, the next season to kick off already. Well, in fact, here we go. 100 Thieves, of course, have settled the air after countless tweets and quotes over the last few weeks on returning to Call of Duty. Of course, 100T announced yesterday two new players previously of Team Caliber, both Pharaoh and Kenny, will be joining the team. Of course, to go along with that as well, through multiple tweets, it seems as if all four players who are under the Team Caliber banner, including Enable and Accuracy, also have announced their departure from the organization, and it was later confirmed all have been sold to future organizations is it the same one is it a different one we're obviously going to talk about that today but before we go on to talk about the 100t announcement chance what were your initial thoughts right when you saw when you started to see the tweets coming from the prior tk lineup saying they were leaving the roster what were your initial thoughts that you thought do you think that maybe it was 100t like you know do you think that was possible they were going there or it almost would have had to have been right like you don't break up a team that gets second to champs has three event wins unless there's something that like might be better for individuals on the team. And I feel like 100 Thieves is one of the handful of organizations out there that could probably say like, hey, player A, player B, I'm going to offer you this much more money than your previous contract, whatever it might be, and be able to convince those players. Like Nate Shot has pool in the competitive scene. If Nate Shot wants certain players on his team, He's gonna outside of maybe <laughs> Optic Gaming, he can pretty much get who he wants. Exactly. Now, I was, I at least heard through like speculation, of course, per sources, um, that uh, basically uh, Kenny was going to be the only guy from Team Caliber. So I was very much surprised, at least in my own opinion, to see Pharaoh on there. And then still the speculation does arise is Enable actually going to be there, uh, completing the roster in the future. Um, but I think when we look at the two who obviously were announced, Kenny and Pharaoh, in particular, Chance, everyone's initial thoughts as well. Young team, it's a good, you know, it's a good basis to start off from. Um, when these two were announced, of course, to be the 100T roster, as of right now, what was your first impression on them? Well, I mean, they got the two superstars, really, of the TK roster that could win Stage 2 playoffs, that could get second in champs, and interesting two players as well, because Kenny was the clear-cut best SMG without real question. He was the most yeah. consistent one by far. Man played like a freak of nature every single event. Even when his team was getting beat, he was playing even better where there was, like, slack. And then Farah's obviously... One of the best S and D players in the world, including all the pro players. His variant game started out pretty solid and ended yep. up really damn good. And he's only been playing it for a year now. So you're expecting Pharaoh to get even better next year. You got the guy that was already the best this year. I mean, depending on who they pick up, they just got second in champs. They're going to be even more of a contender than they were this year. Definitely. And I think to kind of add along with the the titles that you were obviously deeming them as well, like I want to really talk about like really what they accomplished. And you could argue, Kenny, is it really his rookie season? Obviously, with a little bit of experience in back in advance. Well, for, I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to say this kind of counts as his rookie season. His first CWL time in the CWL. CWL. Season, right, exactly, yeah. CWL rookie season. So after one year, right, you're telling me in their rookie season, they both led top franchises throughout the CWL regular seasons. They want to They win, right, a combined four championships throughout the year. They play on the biggest stage in Call of Duty at the CWL Champs Grand Final and played very, very well, I might say, and finished as runners-up. They both four are events? candidates. What? What's up? Four events? Yeah. What was number four? They both won uh, together stage two playoffs. Oh, I get what you're saying. Okay, my yeah. bad. Combined, so, right. Two. Gotcha. Well, no, gotcha. yeah, absolutely. Like, these, these titles are actually insane. Like, And then also, you both could argue they're candidates, if not are, Rookie of the Year. Yes. Farrell is a candidate for Search and Destroy Player of the Year. Kenny is really, and there shouldn't be a contest, SNG Player of the Year, Breakout Player of the Year, and I think it's fair to say a candidate for Call of Duty World War II MVP. This is their rookie season chance, and they have all of those achievements along with them. Many people would hope for these accomplishments after a decade of playing, let alone a season, let alone a rookie season. It's, un it's unreal. They're unbelievably good players, and like... Obviously, the TK roster breaks up. So enable and accuracy, we don't know what happens to them yet. But there's also guys like Karma that are like waiting in the wings, and we don't know where he's going to fall. And he's a guy that's been very, very vocal about wanting to be a main AR since he ended up getting dropped from the Opti Gaming team. And, well, they have Pharaoh, they have Kenny. They need a main AR. And, frankly, I don't know how many options other than, like, uh, Karma and accuracy are out there. 
But if those are the two guys you're picking from, you really enjoy the spot that you're in if you're 100 Thieves. Well, now, yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because I really want to discuss and, and really talk about who potentially could be the new additions to kind of speculate who would be great uh, in partnership with Kenny and Farrell. And I think, like I said, you could argue absolutely karma is one of those options all throughout Reddit, all throughout Twitter. People are saying he's not playing for OG anytime soon, it seems like. He's done with the organization, and he seems like an obvious pick whenever Nature has talked about how he wanted one of the OG players that would be the one, and you could argue that probably be the easiest one to try to grab. Along with that, we still have the prior team caliber players. Accuracy and Enable, of course, are both available, it seems like. We don't really know officially uh, what organizations they're a part of, if they happen to be along with this one, uh, but those two guys are available. Um, I've personally heard rumors along the lines of players like Octane, guys like Slasher could be out there, along with John and J-Cap. So those are some maybe guys that we could add on paper to at least speculate from. And then also you have some interesting names as well. Dashy, if you can get him out of that complexity contract, those three would be, I know, I, I feel the exact same way. Like that would be one of the most hype rosters, probably like the last three years for me. I don't think I'd be more excited than to see a lineup like that altogether. And then you could maybe argue the same thing for Hook, right? Is in a pretty awkward spot with Envy. Seems to be locked in. But if you can get him, this new generation team would be an amazing story. That, that would be like if... If you get Dashy as a man AR on that team, I think – so he's the type of player that I think with the team that he would be on with 100 Thieves, you would need your fourth guy to be like a leader. Like you wouldn't – like you could, might go for J-Cap or something like that if some guy that read my mind over the comms in games. Yeah. Or even Enable would be a great pick for that as well because while, yes, Dashy is a freak of nature, I feel like putting him on a team with Kenny and Farrell, like – that's a team that's going to need like a little bit more communication. Someone to be making the decisions for the team, making the strat calls. Well, fair is the strat caller for S and D, but for respawn at the very least. So I would be a little bit on edge if those were the first three that they picked up. But if, for example, if they picked up a J cap or an enable, or someone is their third, that you're very confident can be the leader, then like Dashy is a perfect pick. But at the same time, is he better than Carmen the main AR role? It's really tough to say. Who really knows? Is he better than Slasher? No, he's not. But that's also a team that would never lose an S&D, right? If you get Dashy, Pharaoh, and Kenny on a team, I don't know who you put together to beat them in Search and Destroy like ever. So, yeah, no, the, a terrifying amount of potential between a lot of different players. Now, with the players mentioned and maybe with a, a few others as well, Chance, if you became the CEO of 100 Thieves tomorrow, who are you looking at? Like, is there an ideal lineup? I know we listed a few players, but out of the ones maybe that you mentioned, you talked about JCat, we talked about Dashy, Enable, etc. Is there any guys on paper that you're saying, you know what, if I'm Nade, I'm going to go after these guys because I think they would complement this roster and have the best chance of winning some titles in BO4? I mean, it depends on what the other contracts of players are on organizations, obviously. If I was playing it safe, honestly, I would probably try to pick up accuracy right away. He just had the best year of his career. He was the duo with Kenny all year. And while I think there are still a few ARs that are clear cut better than accuracy, and literally I just mean like your slasher, your octane. Mm -hmm. And after that, even then it gets kind of metal. So like unless you get one of those guys, I think accuracy would be a safe pickup to go for first. Because he gives you freedom for who you want to get as your fourth player as well. Accuracy is a good enough leader. He's good enough in comps. He's good enough at the post-up AR role that whoever you get as your next sub or your next flex or whatever you want, because Farrah couldn't do both. Um, I think that would be the most wiggle room for the team. But at the same time, if you can get a player like Dashy, maybe you're just committing and saying like, hey, I want all the talent possible. And then you just kind of have to hope you get a fourth that works out chemistry-wise. But in the same time, you got a guy like Karma waiting in the wings and who knows how good he could be at the main AR role in Black Ops 4 and he's not a player you really say no to. So if Karma's like, I want to play for this team, you kind of just have to say yes. But hey, the same thing can be said for a slasher and an octane. So I think the safe thing to do would be to pick up accuracy first, gives you freedom for your fourth. But depending on negotiations, go with an octane or a slasher. If you can get one of those two guys, maybe take him before accuracy or probably take him before accuracy. And that also gives you freedom for who you pick up as your fourth. So I don't know. I think if they could get one of those three guys, either accuracy uh, slash or octane, lock them in. And then karma, I think, like, I know he wants to be the main AR, but if he ends up on the team with accuracy and he still wants to play, make him like a flex or something like that, or maybe hope that Black Ops 4 is a 2 AR meta, or hope that Black Ops 4 goes to 5v5, and now you can pick up all these great players. So <laughs> that's very fingers true. crossed for a lot of things. Exactly. At least whenever I look at, at these two guys, to me, like what really needs to be said is like, at least if I'm in eight shot shoes, it's like, hey, 
I need a guy, no matter who I get, to really kind of bring, not necessarily the egos, but to bring the comms down. I think it's exactly what you were mentioning. Like, like these guys are absolutely insane. They have an incredible amount of talent. To me, I want to have that voice. If, if I'm nature on this scenario, if I'm making this team, I want to have that voice that's influential, is incredibly important for future that I think this team wants to build is to have that kind of base of having a guy who has a lot of um, experience. So to me, at least for, for at least in my opinion, I would love to see a J-cap and a slasher. I would love to see a J-cap and a dashy. Of course, best scenario if you can get slasher, dashy, and or J-cap in the first place. But in either of these drawn pickups, I, I think at least if, if you're looking at the team that I'm trying to get here, you have the AR position covered either by Slasher or Dashy, right, in this in this situation. Your SMG position is going to be locked down no matter what because you get Kenny, had an insane year, one of the best SMG players, if not the best, of the World War II season. And then, depending on the meta, J-Cap and Feral, like I said, they can swap, they can intertwine. If we're playing the same World War II meta, you can have J-Cap playing support. You see that flex roll coming through from Feral. Like, it, it really is up to you, right? And obviously, the meta remains to be seen. And I think in Hardpoint... My team's looking pretty good, right? We got the chemistry, we have the slang down, both main roles are filled by guys who had insane stats last year in Slasher and or um, Dashy, and then along with Kenny. In Search and Destroy, I think it's fair to say, a, a very scary team to have guys like this all lined up. And whether or not I had Slasher or Dashy, I would either have the number two SD KD or the number one SD KD. And then I would have, if I chose Slasher, the fifth in SD kills per round. And with Dashy, I'd have the number two kills in search and destroy per round in this last year. And then you argue and say, hey, well, they got a hard point. They got search and destroy covered. How about CTF? Well, it just so happens, Chance, that I've got JCAP, the <laughs> CTF mastermind. He's orchestrating all the pieces. You know, when it comes down to clutch time, right? This is the guy who you want to have on your roster. He has the highest average placement at champs of anyone ever who's, who has competed at one. And it just so happens he won the last Black Ops chance in Black Ops 3. I don't know, man. It's just, that's that's the roster that I'm looking at. I did a lot of research last night trying to figure out a team who I think would complement this roster well. I think depending on the AR that you can get, I think JCAP, at least for me, would really help out depending on if you got a lot of young talent and it would at least assist uh, Kenny and Farrow in this position. Yeah, I mean, it's worth pointing out that like maybe you don't get CTF next year, which maybe puts a small dent in, in Cap's it's, resume. It is true. That. It is true, yeah. If you go to Uplink, it could go to Control. And if it goes to Control... It might be a more slay heavy game mode. So maybe you want some more kills. Like the the issue has always been with making roster change before the game comes out. You don't know how good someone's going to be. Like they haven't played the game. They haven't worked together as a team. So it's a huge unknown factor. Like we expected out the gaming, going into boots on the ground to be the clear cut best team. Obviously that didn't work out in the slightest. So making roster moves before it happens is always tough. And you just have to bank on a lot of different things. But then there are certain players that you can't say no to. Like if you have the opportunity to get Kenny and Farrell months before the game comes out, obviously you say yes to that. And I think every player we've pretty much talked about is a player that you're going to say yes to if you want. So I think that's a solid squad. I will say in all the conversations people are having, I think Enable is super underrated in yeah, what he brings I to agree. the table. Like he doesn't bring together much like S and D gameplay, <laughs> but if he's on a team with Kenny and Farrell, like what really is there for the man? They, to just, do? they just need someone to carry the bomb. Like that's yeah, really all it is at that point. Watch the flight, carry the bomb, <laughs> you'll be fine. Like they won an event with him dropping a .41 in S and D, which is hysterical. It's my favorite stat line from World War II. But he also brings a hefty amount of communication to the team. Like if you ever listen to TK's comms, he was doing the workload because like Farrell doesn't call out too much. Kenny. What can he call out? He's just calling out people that are on the other side of the map that he's busy killing. He's yeah, not on dead, like, the back dead, side like, of watching. Really yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, like, accuracy can do a lot, and he did do a lot. And Enable is another guy that was great to have that could actually, like, orchestrate stuff. So I think Enable's super underrated. If he ends up on that team, I wouldn't be disappointed. So I don't know. There, there's a lot of fun potential with 100 Thieves. They're definitely shaping up to be a powerhouse squad. Because then Nate Shot can also come to the table and say, like, hey – I've got Kenny and Farrow on my team. Who wants to play with these guys? And everyone will just raise their hands like immediately. And I think too, like the draw that Nate Chart has as well when it comes down to this organization is insane. I, th I think we can both agree that coming into Call of Duty again, right, as Hunter Thieves is, Nate Chart is coming at this hard. And I mentioned this a few days ago on the Dispatch interview that I had with Paradox. We were kind of discussing the potential rumors of Hunter Thieves, like what the team is really going to be like. And I was like, I really think Nate is coming at this hard. He wants to be the best. Call of Duty team in the world, and we even see we've even seen it as well in the NALCS. Whenever Hundred Thieves and um, Optic go up against each other, 
He was like, guys, if you beat Optic Gaming, I'm going to buy all of you Yeezys. Like, it's, it's getting this serious to where I want to beat them so bad that I'm willing to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars to add in that extra incentive for you guys to take these guys down. So I think when it comes down to Call of Duty, their history where it kind of comes from this exact game, I think he wants to hit this hard, and I think he wants to destroy Optic at all possibilities. And then speaking of history, we didn't even mention, he might be able to get Formal as well. Like Formal who had like a oh, gear yeah, that's that true. I think was still pretty good, but not up to Formal standards. Like At Champs though, like that was a that was a performance and a half. That's what I'm saying. He came right. out with the fire, and you're going into Black Ops Four, which I think I'd have to imagine is going to be more suitable form. Like the faster the game gets, the better formal gets. So I think he's going to come back and have an amazing year uh, year next year. And if he ends up on a roster with Kenny and Pharaoh, again, that that disgusting amount of potential for those guys. And I think too, there's like a lot of really solid like AR talent out there. Like we could we could like. Okay. Probably right now we could list like, hey, this is a top AR, this is a top AR, this is a top. I, I'm thinking of four right now that come to my mind. And SMGs, though, it's kind of difficult to find that consistent guy who can drop like a 1.1 consistently. Like Kenny was really the only guy. I mean, you could throw a yes. few out there. But like it is very difficult to fill that SMG role. They've already got that covered. So it's like out of the options that are available for an assault rifle player, we got like a, a plethora. Like we got a full pool of guys. It's like, oh, that guy doesn't work out. It's fine. We still have this option. I feel like with Kenny... You've already got the all-star in that, and now it's just time to compliment him when it comes down to the AR. But, of course, getting back onto to Nate Shot's history as an esports professional, and more specifically as a Call of Duty esports professional, do you think that really benefits him a lot more than people might originally think whenever he's landing or trying to land top talent compared to other organizations because of his history exit as an esports professional and let alone as a Call of Duty esports professional? Do you think that maybe would equate to making players more interested in, in going with the Hunter T rather than, say, I don't know, like an LG or an NVS when they have that presence and that, you know, history that Nate Shot has? I, well, the, the pull Nate Shot has, I have to imagine, is good enough to get a ton of players that are in the league, but maybe not necessarily the best. Like some of the best players aren't going to want to leave their org because their team is already good enough. Like Rise Nation, for example. Those players have enough talent that if, like, we want to stick together next year – you wouldn't necessarily be crazy to leave, but it would take an insane opportunity for you to leave that team. But now that Nate Shot has Kenny and Pharaoh as like chips in his negotiation table, yeah. then yes, he has all the pull in the world. Again, outside of like maybe Optic Gaming, I think he could probably get almost whoever we want, obviously depending on like what the contracts are. Yeah, exactly. So of course, with all that speculation kind of out of the way, I think the only question that does remain as of now uh, is what's what's the future of Team Caliber? Now, this, this is totally like out there question. I, I I see the reaction on your face. Like, where does Team Caliber go from here? I know I saw a few tweets actually coming in from Kozdev saying like, hey, we need to reach out, try to get some investors. But in your opinion, as a, as an organization who literally had the best year they've ever had, they've won a number of different titles. You could argue they're the best organization throughout World War II on just accomplishments alone. They finished second at the Call of Duty Championships with all of the hurdles that you can imagine, losing methods, losing top players because of the talks of a league minimum salary, etc. Where is the future lying for Team Caliber if they were to try to implement themselves back into Black Ops 4 chance? I mean, that's a tough one, right? Because like I was even saying like Nate Shot, a, a guy that's on the Mount Rushmore of the Call of Duty scene, I don't think he has enough pool by himself to land whoever he wants. He needs some like negotiation chips, right? And he's got those. And I think Team Caliber obviously is going to be less impactful, less pull than Nate Shot has. But then I, what what chips do they have at the table? Like if they lost their entire team and are starting from scratch, I don't even know what players from other pro league teams are even available to go after or to poach or to anything. So I, I genuinely don't know what the landscape is like for them. They might have to basically start over with amateur players, if you will, like I find like the old lightning panda squad, maybe look at guys like that. Who Bring are back theory and Gunjar. Let's, let's, let's make another run boys. They, they, <laughs> I, I don't see what else you could really do. Uh, again, depending on what the contracts are, as you always have to say, they don't have any play. Like they're starting from complete scratch. I, it's just that seems incredibly tough to me. If Team Caliber has a bounce back year where they even place consistently top eight, I would be incredibly impressed by like the the managerial skills of whoever's running that team. If it's Kostov that has his finger on the pulse, I don't know. But that would be impressive because I just think they're in a big hole if they lost all of them. If they, if they lost their superstars, everybody. That's for sure. Of course, you guys can follow Chance on Twitter at ChanceCast or catch him 
really, on any major league CWL event, breaking down the action from the analyst desk. Thank you so much, Chance, for joining me yet again.